staying with education, but from schools up to universities. And another university in a row of speakers. This time it's the University of Bristol. The Students' Union there backing proposals to ban any turf speaker. Turf? No, until this morning me neither. Trans exclusionary radical feminists. It's a derogatory term I read to describe those who believe that identifying as a woman is not the same as being born a woman. It also refers to people who are deemed to hold transphobic views. In the past, students have tried to no platform, as it's called, individual speakers for holding views. Bristol Move appears to be one of the first efforts to institute a blanket ban. Now, we go back to 2015 when students tried to stop Jermaine Greer from appearing at Cardiff University on the basis she'd expressed transphobic views in the, far, in the past views, such as, and I quote, I've asked my doctor to give me long ears and liver spots and I'm going to wear a brown coat, but that won't turn me into an effing cocker spaniel. That caused offence. Others have also been no-platformed. But in reality, while you must have utter respect for someone who has uh, a, a transition, transgendered, to a woman, of course. But she wasn't born a woman. I mean, it's a fact of life, isn't it? Tara Hewitt is a diversity consultant and co-founder of the Trans Equality Legal Initiative. What would you say to this particular students' union this in, in this instance? Good morning. Hi again, Nick. Um, I think what's really important is that if we believe in freedom, that student unions and organisations like the NUS and other um, organisations across the UK are free to choose who they do or don't invite onto their mm. buildings and sites, the same way universities should be free to choose as well. And so I, I, I'm, I was speaking to the researcher before, and my, my position isn't absolute on either side. It's about actually saying that freedom needs to be left with whoever is planning the event or the conference or, or whatever the debate is. Um, and, that, and that's really what we should be backing, that, that, that level of freedom. What happens if we don't have that level of freedom? Where might we end up? Um, well, for me, I think debate important in situations where the people that are speaking have particular knowledge on a topic. When you're planning an event, you want to make sure that you know what expertise is somebody bringing to the panel, um, why, why are you bringing them there, who are the other people that are going to be on that panel, are we just inviting somebody to, to try and create some media for her because they're quite controversial, actually, is this really legitimate debate? So I think that the challenge that they were raising in Bristol was there was an event recently where um, they were discussing the, the reforms of the Gender Recognition Act, but there wasn't anybody of note in terms of who legal expertise, um, expertise from a welfare perspective, we can all have opinions on issues, but I, I usually don't get ring up every week to have an article in the Times. So I think that's, yes. that's the key discussion point. When, you're when, 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 does a, when does a healthy difference of opinion start to become an issue or indeed an insult? I, I think if you look at the, the comment you, you shared from Jermaine, I understand why you shared that yeah. comment, because obviously it's a daytime show and some of the other comments were less, uh, were not as able to be shared. No, I, I appreciate more, that. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Yeah. And, and for me, I think you judge speakers if they've made abusive comments like that in the past. If you're a professional organisation, uh, I'm sure you've spoke at many many uh -huh. events activities uh -huh. yourself. And yeah. people make a judgment on on that. And Jermaine has to take to account that she's used language like that in an inappropriate way. And people are going to judge that and judge organisations that choose Jermaine to speak. That doesn't mean, though, that we necessarily need lists of people that are banned. It's about planning events and judging who people invite. And people can have a, a free view on that. I'll criticise organisations, but I think I criticised a university that invited Jermaine to keynote speech on uh, the future of women in leadership. Because that wasn't a debate. That's inviting somebody that excludes a group of women. And if actually I'm a student at that university thinking about my future as a woman, um, I want to make sure that the speaker that I'm listening to believes that all women have that future. And so I think that's the type of discussion and debate we should be having on this, not just having uh, the two polarised points of view, which we often get when we discuss on our platform. And lastly, when you hear someone position that I enjoy and I say that I, I, I understand what the university is saying, but they're wrong, and you should afford all respect to someone who has uh, transitioned, transgendered a woman, but they will never know what it's like to they were not born a woman. Is, is that an acceptable comment, or do you think even I'm dancing on thin eyes here? I think as we live in a free society, you can hold whatever view that you want. I think the problem is that we should be civil to each other. I think some of the challenges, some of these groups, they refuse to use the pronouns that people use to talk about themselves. If you tell me your name's Mick, I'm going to use Nick because I'm a human being and I want to be nice and friendly yes. to everybody. And I'll judge people on those common decencies. And I think sometimes the discussion on this goes further than that. People are actively saying that you shouldn't engage with people in the language that makes them feel comfortable. And they're going out of the way yeah. to hurt other people. And I think that's the type of discussion in any organisation we should be judging. Yes. Um, and so I think that's, that's the tone of the debate that we should be having. 
Always enjoy speaking with you, Tarek Hewitt. Thank you. You are a diversity consultant. You are co-founder of the Trans Equality Legal Initiative, and we will take your views on that. It, a respect, of course, absolutely, all sort of help and comfort that can be provided, but they're not a woman. End of. Would you agree? After this, your views, 9.45.